Hello guys, this is Moni again from VT Magic and as per your request, I'm going to show you the listening part this time and I've actually tried the very recent test from btpractice.com which came out on the 29th of March and I got 90 for listening and other part of the test so now we're going to find out how exactly you can achieve the same score okay, so where does your listening score come from? obviously it's from your listening part which is the fourth part of the test and consists of eight tasks and it also coming from your speaking part which is repeat sentence, retell lecture and answer short question so first let's try the listening part For the purposes of our course, the way that I think about it, I guess the way I want you to think about it, is generally just the conditions in which a species can survive and reproduce. And those conditions, or the niche, could be determined by water economy, which I'll talk about. That is, the ability of a species to regulate its body water. Its tolerance for temperatures. We saw the Arctic fox out there, frigid cold, and its tolerance for colder temperatures. Its body size, certainly its diet and its circadian and circannual rhythms, its daily behaviour activity, its seasonal activity, rhythm of timing, daily circadian and seasonal. Its habitat use, so how it uses the habitat available to it. And of course, its behaviour. These are all factors that affect a species, how an animal can survive and reproduce. Okay, the first part is summarize spoken text. If you check my YouTube video, uh, you can also see the video that I did for summarize spoken text with all the tips that you need for this section. Okay, I actually prefer to type my answers as I listen to the recording because I can save time for, um, you know, typing all my answers instead of transferring notes from the erasable notepad. Yep, and now we're going to connect all the points together.
Remember that linking words are very important when you write some summaries or essays because it can enhance your written discourse. Okay. Uh, finally, this are okay, just now I'm going over my words count limit, but it's okay because we can fix it later on. If you notice, I have not tried to paraphrase anything. And I actually think that there's no need to paraphrase. You need to prove your listening skills, uh, that you caught all the keywords, that all the, all the points uh, that you heard are included in the summary. Okay, the purpose of our course is to explain the condition for species to survive and reproduce. It was emphasized on the water economy, which is the ability to regulate water tolerance and for cold temperature. The primary factors affecting these animals are the body size, circadian rhythm, seasonal activities, habitat usage, which is available to it, and its behavior. Finally, these are all factors affecting animals' survival and reproduction. The Mayans didn't enjoy their chocolate in the bar form we do now today. It would be over one and a half thousand years before that happened. Instead, they drank their chocolate. After grinding the cacao seeds into a paste, they would then mix it with water, chili peppers, cornmeal, and other ingredients into a thick, foamy, bitter concoction. Chocolate had a very special place in the Mayan society and was often used for ceremonial purposes. Mayan couples often drank chocolate in marriage ceremonies, and it was offered to the gods. Although chocolate was enjoyed by most social classes in the Mayan society, the Aztecs weren't so lucky. Since most of the Aztec empire consisted of high, dry land, it was nearly impossible for the cacao tree to flourish. Because of this, the only way for Aztecs to come by chocolate would be to trade for it. The only members of Aztec society that could afford to consume the cacao beans were the merchants and the Aztec nobility. However, Aztec society was so obsessed with the product that they actually used it as money. People would actually carry around a pocket full of cacao seeds, much like we do pocket change. In fact, people went so far as to actually counterfeit cacao beans to use as money.
Yeah, remember that you have 10 minutes for each task and if we're looking at the clock, I've only spent 15 minutes for both of them. Politicians talk all the time about democracy. Today we're going to learn about the moment of its invention. What sort of time are we talking about? Well, we can, in fact, name a specific year, 508 BC. It marked the end of the period of what was called tyranny or effectively dictatorship by strong families and the assertion of its will by the people. How did it happen? I think people have got pretty fed up with the dictators who've been rather too self-indulgent uh, and not done a terribly good job in the later years. Um, but in a way, these dictatorships were an advance from earlier kingship I in many states. So that was one step. But the next step was to spread the base of power uh, and introduce power by the people. And that's where we come to the word demos, democracy. Yes, indeed, the demos, the, the people, um, it, it means the, the community as a whole. Uh, we have to be slightly careful, of course, how we define the community in political terms because it's hard to know how many people there were in Athens at that period. It, it was a fairly small-scale society, but it's normally reckoned that there was something of the order of 30,000 citizens. The past two years have brought more than their fair share of hurricanes, and this season's shaping up to be another big one. This comes after two decades of low hurricane activity. How do scientists know what the hurricane season will be like? Why should hurricane prediction be any more accurate than, let's say, your five-day forecast? Well, we'll try to find out this hour. We'll also talk about El Nino. You know El Nino. It may be coming back because strong El Nino conditions are developing in the tropical Pacific. Will that mean heavy rainfall and mudslides out west, and hot, perhaps, droughts in parts of Africa and South America? For many developed countries, the 1980s was a time when the switch from traditional heavy industries and manufacturing to services and information-based enterprise was completed. This led to widespread changes in employment patterns in these countries, as well as having profound social effects. In fact, it isn't going too far to say that there was a basic transformation in the whole culture, which can still be observed today. You always check spelling before clicking next because it can affect your writing score as well. Labor believes that there can be benefits from change, but if we're going to have change, it needs to be on the basis that the government has addressed the cost-benefit issues and has addressed the legitimate privacy concerns of Australians. So far, it's failed to address either. In relation to cost-benefit, it claims there will be a saving of the order of $3 billion over 10 years, but it refuses to release the assumptions on which that claim is based. So it simply expects Australians to take it on trust. Notice I didn't really care about my spelling while I was typing during the audio uh, as I wanted to make sure that I can catch all the blanks, you know, and then we can come back to fix the spelling later on. So assumption, release the assumption. Okay, it simply expects government legitimate 
all looks good. What is classical physics? Let's start with the easiest, perhaps. What is physics? Physics is the study of the natural world. It's the study of the physical world, the world we live in. It's experimental science, and it's really the heart, the core of all other experimental sciences. Physics goes beyond just a simple description of nature. It's an attempt to unify a broad variety of phenomena that we observe in the world, both the natural world and the technological world. We're looking for the underlying principles, the explanation, the prediction. We would like to be able to really understand the world around us, measurable things in particular. Physics studies matter and energy, space and time, studies particles and waves, forces and motion. These are a lot of words that we, we use. We have deep in, intuitive sense uh, about what those words mean. And part of what we're going to be doing in this course is to start looking carefully at each of these words. What do I mean by energy? What do I mean by force? How would I define that in a laboratory and measure it? And what use is it? How does it help me to understand things about the world? Sometimes I find myself quite confused while doing this task because all the summaries are quite tricky <laughs> so it's definitely not the first one not the last one probably second on the third I'm gonna go with the second one Hey, Sally, how are you? you yeah, all right? right, yeah. Look, I was wondering, did you uh, go to Alan Johnson's lecture on globalisation yesterday? Of course. And why weren't you there? Uh, I had a bit of a nightmare. My alarm didn't go off and I uh, overslept. Oh, John, that's pathetic. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, was it any good, the lecture? Well, yeah. No, actually it was. It was quite interesting, but it was a bit complicated. I took some notes, actually. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, I I'm sorry to bother you. I wonder, could you direct me to Lecture Hall 2B, please? Yes, of course, but what lecture do you have? It's uh, Sociology, uh, Professor Travers. Travers. We had him last year. He's fantastic. Oh, really? He has a tendency to sort of wander around the campus talking to himself, but oh. he's really, really inspirational. Uh. You know, he helped Giddens when he was asked to advise the government. Oh. Wish we had him this year. Well, uh, I, I, I don't know him. Uh, I've not been to any of his lectures so far. You see, I'm just taking sociology as an elective or, or a subsidiary subject. Oh, so what are you studying for your major? Um, psychology. I could never fathom psychology. Oh. <laughs> I can hardly say it. <laughs> um, it always seemed like literature confusing itself a bit, but I, I don't know. Anyway, this is all very interesting, but you need to get to... Um, to, to B. To B. All the sociology lectures are in Block B, which is next to the Union Building. So, if you go along here yes. and turn right at the end of the path, you'll see the Union Building in front of you. Right. Block B is on the right. The first step was just to see if we had any competitors. There was one company in New Zealand who had a similar idea, but they lacked the branding I think which is very important if you're going to be marketing a product properly. The next step was to research the injuries and ailments that surfers suffer whilst they're travelling. That was a pretty easy part considering I'm a surfer myself, but it was, it was also a good idea to get some research and find out how much people were spending on first aid products 
what was a popular product to take you with you with you while overseas and how much would you be willing to pay for a kit like this. Scott actually spent a year researching and developing the kit and successfully applied for funding under the government new enterprise incentive scheme which supported him. It's quite interesting to think about the glitter zones where we assume because they reduce blood sugar that they would have beneficial effects on these long-term cardiovascular issues. But now we're finding that with rosy glitazone, they may actually be deleterious. And with pioglitazone, it may be a small benefit. And so the question you ask about the benefit to risk ratio is really the critical one today. Should we continue to use these drugs? And I think it's quite difficult with the small amount of information we have to come to a... Is there a moment of panic? I guess that sort of ebbs and flows because if we get it wrong at any stage, it's pretty out there if we get it wrong. Their main suspect was a virus. Retroviruses are known to cause cancer. Yet no matter how hard they looked, no one could see any sign of viral attack. And there were baffling anomalies. Like, why aren't any devils showing immunity? We had 10 or 11 pathologists around the microscope with 10 or 11 different opinions about what we were actually dealing with. Yeah, I mean, we were A professor is also a member of a profession, presumably one comparing people who see their discipline as a vocation in its full sense. A vocation, from vocare to call, is a call. Despite some modern uses which reduce it to the practicalities of employment, practice and not theory, the product of training, not education, a vocation is less than this. A calling is active, as well as passive. It implies a sensation of purpose. There is a duty to be vocal. You know, the, the incredible thing about quantum mechanics, there are many incredible things, but one of them, at least to me, is that it really works. Mm. It is the theory of the universe. Mm. It describes what's going on here on Earth, but it describes what happens in the early universe that, uh, that Andre studies. And so when we think about how those building blocks that Leon was just describing fit together to mm. make the world around us, uh, we use quantum mechanics to describe atoms, nuclei, molecules, light. Uh, it is the theory of, of the world. And so it's not surprising that we see it in, in many everyday occurrences and many everyday applications. Um, an example might be the lasers that you see in, mm -hmm. in a compact display or the uh, supermarket scanner. Mm -hmm. Your role will principally involve development of new chemical processes. Keep in mind that this is the most important task in listening. Um, every correctly spelled word gives you one point. Yep, so, um, and it also gives you a score for writing. Um, so you need to make sure that uh, all the words are spelled correctly and in the correct order. To gain full marks, 
an appropriate bibliography is required. The integration of architecture studies with community projects is widely encouraged. So it was listening, and now I'm going to show you the speaking part. An understanding of mathematics is vital for most science subjects. Understanding mathematics is vital for most science subjects. If we work on this together, we'll get through it quickly. If we work on it together, we will get through it quickly. The new law professor used to work for the World Bank. The new law professor used to work for the World Bank. Many environment experts are very concerned about the future of our planet. Many environment experts are very concerned about the future of our planet. The graph shows the percentage of people who smoke according to gender. The graph shows the percentage of people who smoke according to gender. The meeting is always on the third Wednesday of the month. The meeting is always on the third Wednesday of the month. We can go anywhere, do anything, you know, achieve any height. We can do anything, you know, go anywhere, achieve any height. Construction of the Empire State Building in New York was completed in 1931. Construction of the Empire State Building in New York was completed in 1931. People under 70 have a higher quality of life than those over 70. People under 70 have higher quality of life than those over 70. The area of Canada is more than 3.8 million square miles. The area of Canada is more than 3.8 square miles. Take the coffee industry. The figures are roughly these. The coffee market in the world is worth about 60 billion. The growers get about 5.5 billion. Ten years ago, the market was about 30 billion, and the growers got a third of that. What has happened? What has happened is that well-meaning people, Americans, Germans, Europeans, decided that they would help Vietnam. And so, they created a coffee industry there, which is now the second biggest producer in the world. This has had serious effects on other countries like Colombia that depend on coffee exports.
of the lecture is about coffee industry. It was mentioned that coffee market in the world is about 60 million and the growth is about 5.5 billion. However, she mentioned that 10 years ago it was about 30 billion and the question she brought is that what has happened? So firstly, American, German and European decided to help Vietnam and created a new coffee industry and it became the second producer in the world. However, this has serious effect on other countries which are dependent on the coffee export like uh, Colombia. You can see that the two charts each give quite a different picture of the performance of boys and girls in the two key subjects of maths and English. It shows that in English, girls consistently outperform boys over a period of six years, achieving scores about 10% uh, above their male peers. There is quite a different picture when we look at the maths results with no real difference between genders in the results. What is the explanation for these key differences? Uh, to answer this question, researchers look at biological and cognitive factors and a range of social factors. The interaction between these different components in early childhood development are seen as maintained and reinforced in the school context, and this leads to distinct gender patterns of behaviour in skills with direct consequences for school performance and achievement. The argument uses this evidence to show that biological factors, such as patterns of cognitive development, are closely linked to social factors, such as learned gender categories. These cognitive skills are learned both preschool and subsequently at school, supported by the responses of teachers, creating a reinforcement of patterns. Um, the lecture provides information on two charts which compare performance of boys and girls in two subjects, math and English. In English, it can be seen that girls outperform boys in achieving score of 10% above their male peers. On the other hand, in math, there's no real differences. And there's some explanation for this, which is in biological and cognitive factors as well as social factors. These factors are seen in child development and are reinforced in school context and have great impact on school performance and achievement. In conclusion, it was mentioned that these cognitive skills are learned during the preschool and at schools and are strongly supported by the teachers in the school. In our survey, over 100 CEOs who had recently been through an acquisition or merger were asked which areas of their activities needed the most effort. Uh, as you can see... The most frequent response to this question was that information technology requires the most integration effort. According to 58% of those we surveyed, IT was the most time-consuming and needed the most work. This is understandable as many of the IT issues are extremely complex and the consequences of any change in IT can have a significant impact. The key is how quickly and effectively IT integration can be achieved. And there has to be a clear understanding of the consequences there may be of not getting it right. The two other areas requiring significant attention, sales, marketing and business development on the one hand, and financial management on the other, both were selected by 49% of the respondents. The lecture provided information on the survey of over 100 CEO who were asked about which area of the activities need the most effort and the result shows that the information technology requires the most integration effort. Furthermore, it also states that 58% of respondents claim that IT is time consuming because any IT issues are very complex and consequences of any changes can have a significant impact and there should be a clear understanding of these consequences of not getting it right. In conclusion, there's also two areas, which are sales and marketing, as well as financial management, which was selected by 49%.
Which country has the third largest population in the UK? Scotland. Wales. Wales. Camels are most likely to be found in what habitat? Desert. Desert. On a compass, which direction is the direct opposite of southwest? Northeast. What do most successful businesses aim to do? Make a profit, declare bankruptcy, or comply with audits? Make a profit. What is it called when the price of goods and services steadily increases over a period of time? Inflation. What mistake has the student made when trying to access the site? Entered invalid password. Algebra, calculus and trigonometry are divisions of which academic field? Mathematics, geometry. What campus building would you go to if you wanted to borrow a book or magazine? Library. Is a profit a loss in funds or a gain in funds? Gain in fund. What energy source does this light bulb need in order to function? Electric. Electricity. Okay, so it was the recording of both speaking and listening. And as you can see, even though I've made some minor mistakes in listening and speaking a little bit, I still managed to get 90. So um, as I mentioned many times, you don't need to be perfect to get a perfect score. But um, remember, do not underestimate your speaking if you want to ace your listening part. I'm talking about repeat sentence, retell lecture, and answer short question. I hope it was helpful, and until next time, guys. Bye!